Hello guys, so today is a dark and stormy night, so I thought I would go ahead and kind of talk about some of my testimony in a little bit more length. So today we're talking about ghosts. In my testimony, I talked about having otherworldly experiences, and those experiences made me question what else could be out there. In every instance, multiple people either knew about the experience I had, had them with me, or, or were experienced them, like experienced them as well. So here are those stories. So my um, otherworldly encounters started very early. So when I was about five or six, I met my grandmother's ghost she had named George. George had a couple of tricks up his sleeve, but his most famous trick was throwing imaginary clothes down the clothes chute that she had. I can remember being alone in the house. My grandmother and my siblings were outside eating watermelon and things. My cat, or there is a cat in here, just so you know. And I'm walking past the clothes chute and I hear clothes fall, fall down the chute. I open it and nothing was there. Kind of freaked me out because I'm five or six. I'm supposed to be alone in the house. And so then I was like, I go out to my grandmother and I was like, hey, there's somebody in the house. She goes, what are you talking about? And I tell her what I hear. She goes, oh no, that's just George. I asked who that was, and she said, oh, that's just our ghost. He's not going to hurt you, but he does like to make noise and bump around the house. So anytime I heard clothes go down the chute, I never looked. <laughs> it scared me as a kid, so I just left it alone. Uh, another example of things happening to me when I was young is my brother, sister, and I were just put to bed, and I was still trying to get to sleep. So I'm laying in the bed. I felt like someone was in the room. I heard soft steps on the carpet going towards the closet in the room. And there was a nightlight by there. So looking in that direction at the nightlight, I saw no one. But what I did see was the closet door open slightly. It was closed. And then click shut. And this time it was at my uncle's house. And I can remember being so scared. I just pulled the covers over my head and over and over said, It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. And I woke up in the morning and I didn't tell anyone because I just figured, well, maybe George follows my grandmother. <laughs> so then there seemed to be a pause in the activity. I can't remember anything of that type happening until we moved out west and my mother got involved with an ex-witch. I think the idea there was to try and convert other witches to Christianity. I have no idea if they were successful or not because at the time I didn't believe in any of this. So I thought they were crazy. And didn't really pay attention to it too much. So at this time in my life though, more strange things kept happening. In the corner of our room every night was what we called the shadow man. And I saw it, my brother saw it, my sister saw it, but my parents did not. <clears throat> he didn't do anything to us, he was just sort of there. He had a wide brimmed hat. It was sort of like when you see those, uh, those cut out outlines of people and they're all black it's sort of like that and you could just it's like when somebody walks into the room you can feel it the, the the displacement of the air and things like that that lets you know someone's there that happened um you just you know he just watched us when we slept when we woke up there he was uh just leaning against the corner of the wall and just being there it, he became so normal like he was there so often it was like looking at the carpet. He just, he was there and that's just what was going on. So the next thing we saw after we saw the shadow man were these black animals that would flit in and out of the rooms. So it'd be like shadow animals that would mostly cats and bugs. And they were just as constant as the shadow man. So eventually you see them and you're just like, oh, okay. I mean, they don't hurt you. They're just sort of there. So once all of that started happening, then we had several nights where we could see red glowing eyes outside of our window, and that was new. Where we live, there were coyotes, but they don't, I don't know if any of you have ever had an experience with a coyote, but a coyote doesn't just run. They stop and look at you. There's, uh, there's, there's always a moment where you can see them, basically. So when we would look outside the window, there'd be no animal and the lights would disappear. But when we would lay back down, their eyes would be there again. Uh, we had no electronics in the room and no toys that could, could explain when the lights 
were coming from. So when we would see these lights, like we try to put our hand there, try and figure out like, where is this light coming from? You know, like, is there something we can trace back? Stuff like that. No, it just, we're two <laughs> points of red light that would just freak us out. We would just have to close our eyes and just try and go to sleep. Like there was a very ominous feeling when that happened. So we would have the lights at the window and the shadow man over here. And we would just be like, whatever, we just have to deal with this. We don't know what it is. So there it is. Uh, we then had another experience. I'm going to tell you two at the same time because they kind of both include buildings. So we had another experience that woke everybody in the house up. In the middle of the night, we heard what sounded like five guys fighting on our rooftop and just like rolling, brrr, you know. My dad burst out of his room with his gun and he ran outside as he was fighting on the roof and there was no one. There was no one on the roof, no one in the yard. Uh, the way that this sounded, somebody would have fallen off the roof. There would have been people on the roof, things like that. But there was no one there. On an alternate trip with my mother and her ex-witch friend, we were, for some reason, this lady had been given a storage unit. Her and my mother went over there to check it out and talk to the guy who was giving it to her. We were allowed to go in there. That's, that's the short part of it. I have no idea who owned this storage unit or anything. I just know that when I walked in there, and I, you know, we were allowed to look at what was in there. So I walked in there and I opened these boxes. And when I picked up a book, I was, I had this impression, or it's like I heard, don't touch that. So then I put it back down. <laughs> I started looking around thinking my mother was behind me, or the lady was behind me, or my siblings had said it. And they said they didn't say that. And I was like, okay. So then I put the book down, I continue through the storage unit, and I hear, get out of here. So I left. I was like, I don't know who's not happy about me being here, but I left. And I couldn't figure out where the voice was coming from. My siblings each had different experiences where they didn't hear a voice. But like uh, my sister got the creeps, and my brother was just sort of like, he was in there for maybe a minute or two and then left. He's like, I just felt like I shouldn't be in there. So I don't know what was going on with that storage unit, but it was definitely covered or something. So it was all a similar idea where they were supposed to leave. So the next story is a bit more recent. One night, my husband and I were sitting down to dinner and we heard our front door open, then our screen door open, and then our front door slam shut as if someone had left the inside of our house. And we knew there wasn't anybody in here because we had just, every time we come home, we checked the house. So we were the only ones in the house, and when we opened the door to try and see if anyone was there, there was no one. No footprints, nothing disturbed. I think one of our cats was actually sitting on the front porch there, just looking at us like, Hey guys. <laughs> so I don't really know uh, what that was, other than a demon messing with us. And I've also had a similar shadow man come look at me through my kitchen window, only this guy was much taller and broader. Uh, I know it wasn't a person because you couldn't see a face. It was just the same way you would look at something that was all black in darkness. You can see an absence of light. Uh, when I went to go open the door to see who was there, or I went to the, tried to go to the window to see what was going on, there was no one there. And the darkness was still there, so I was like, okay, fine, as long as you're outside, that's where you belong, you dang demons. As long as you stay outside. <laughs> um, I also know this, like, it's not a person because uh, I, that when people walk underneath there, you can't see them. It's over six feet tall. So for something to be as big as that was, that's a giant person. Like, this person would have to be seven foot tall and, like, five foot wide or something in order to cover what I saw. So not explainable except for the idea that this is just a demon coming to see what I was doing. All I was doing was washing dishes. So we've also had several instances of knocking on our door or bangs on our, on our, like our, our walls at night, um, which turned out to be nothing and no one, there's no one outside. 
There is no reason for the bang. It's like four o'clock in the morning, you know. So we don't have any idea what, what that's about. Um, when I am sleeping, I have the feeling of someone touching me several times uh, like this, where I take the finger across like this, and that's someone touching me. And then I also had uh, one night where it felt like someone was taking their fingernail and carving or working a infinity pattern across my the back of my hip which I thought was interesting when I woke up there was no one there of course and uh, the sensation stopped so there was that uh, to top it all off though the one that I like most <laughs> guess I shouldn't say I like it I don't really want them to come mess with me but you know this this one happened uh, one Sunday night I was talking to my brother about what we discussed in Bible study how the church is supposed to be in love with you you know we're supposed to love each other we're supposed to be in love with serving God we're not supposed to need things like insurance or uh, like all this stuff so, because we're supposed to support each other we're all supposed to have stories of like well when I needed help the church came and helped me God sent this person God just did this for me all this stuff we're supposed to be supporting each other that way we're supposed to be loving each other and supporting each other to the point where like if you need something someone just gives that to you and then they don't expect anything back that's the love of God so when I was telling him all that I'm sitting there talking about just that right there and in that moment my doorknob was violently turned and the front door was opened a bit and uh, at that point I thought was somebody trying to get into my house you know so we opened the door nobody there nothing disturbed nothing going on so uh, we also did not hear like I have a I have a screen door you have to open first before you open that I did not hear that so it was from the inside that it was open and we didn't open it my husband was in a different room he didn't open it you know so they were there they just mess with you they try to scare you they try to get you off the track excuse me so you know Christianity has an answer for these things and basically what Christianity says is that there are angels on the earth both good and bad so everyone who is a Christian is assigned a guardian angel as far as I understand it but then there are also demons which are bad angels fallen angels who decided not to follow God and they go around messing with people first Peter 5 8 says be alert and of sober mind your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour he you know and that's what it says so he's always watching for someone to mess with how can he mess with you today and if you stay in your prayer and you do your fasting and all this this is what how the Bible talks about demons uh, some of them can't be casted out without prayer and fasting and most of them every time I've had a moment where they were there even when I wasn't a Christian the name of Jesus has such strength um, you can cast them out you can get them to go away uh, one time I had a different experience with a Ouija board where how do I explain this okay so we're doing the Ouija board and most people believe you know everybody is pushing it that it's a subconscious thing so it was just me and this other girl we had only one finger instead of two and it was the tips of our finger right and so she asked a question whatever demon was moving it around moved it I said you lion sack of crap in Jesus name tell the truth and it changed the answer so if you're watching this and you want a way to combat the heebie-jeebies just say in Jesus name get out and they'll leave they're not gonna like it but they'll leave <laughs> so that's why all I wanted to talk to you today about guys um, you just have to be aware of things like this and you have to do what's right anyway <laughs> go out and be a good influence on things and don't worry about this stuff they can't hurt you they can mess with you but they can't hurt you so that's all I want to say today guys let me know down in the comments if you have any scary stories or you have any um, occurrences that have happened in your house since becoming saved or 
even before then. <laughs> All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.